I've been running my video business for about eight years now, and I've seen a lot of success, but there's also a number of things I wish I would have done better or differently and maybe had seen more success. So I would like to share with you, if I were to start my business today, what it would look like this year. With that being said, if you're someone that's getting into this, this is perfect for you. If this is something that you're year two or three into and you're just wanting to hit reset, maybe you could take a few tips away from this as well. But just for reference, this is all for those who are small team or one man band kind of style. Let's start with getting your first client. Now, how do you get that person? Sometimes you're just handed a camera and you're turned into the video guy from now on. My suggestion would actually be to create videos in the niche that you are interested in and create content just within that. So like, let's say I wanna do some product videos so I can just create some product videos on my own and figure out how I like to do it, how to get better at it, and then build your portfolio that way. So when you do reach out to a potential client, you already have something to support. Next, speed is important. The faster that you can get this client off your plate, the sooner you can move on to the next one, get paid by the next one as it continues to roll, that's how you're gonna continue to be able to do more and more. Of course, you're gonna have to learn your program. You're gonna have to learn how to edit if you haven't done this before. So this is gonna take some time, but utilize those shortcuts as much as you can. I would suggest going onto YouTube and finding videos for your specific program on how to edit quicker. Other people have their own keyboard shortcuts in which you can actually use those and learn off of them how to quickly use these pieces. Or you can just search these things within your program itself. If you can think about it and think, hey, maybe this shortcut exists, it probably does. So search for it, find it, utilize it, edit faster, move on to the next client, and so on and so forth. Doing work for cheap or for free. And I'll keep this till the end. I think this is the most important thing you can do for your business. I remember listening to Philip Bloom one time years and years ago about how he started out doing news work. And what that forced him to do was to turn out things very quickly, but at a high volume. So he's continually doing work because news happens every day. He's shooting, he's editing and pushing it out. So he gets those repetitions in. That happens when you're able to do things for free, not just on the work side, but also interacting with clients, having edits, knowing how to talk with them, how to sell to them, even though it's free, they haven't seen your work before, maybe you don't have any, and this introduces you to them to get further into that relationship. Relationships are the most important thing, and they can start when you are doing them a favor, such as a free or cheap product. This will set the course and trajectory for where you will be in this industry. For example, if you jump right into sports, sports will be the one place that you'll continually get picked up. If you jump into food and restaurants, you'll always be that video person for food and restaurants. Or if you jump into a spot like weddings, you will continually be known as a wedding person until you can fight out of these things. So find that trajectory that you wanna be in and go into it by doing this free work for clients that are in that realm. This is a tactic that I still use today if I want to. I always have it in my back pocket, but at the end of the day, you can see projects like this that start out for very cheap or completely free and turn into tens of thousands of dollars. As you get more projects, get on retainer. Retainer is one of the most wonderful things you can do because in this industry, you don't have much guaranteed income. You take things project by project, there's nothing that's gonna continually pay you. When I worked at Best Buy for a number of years, I knew that I was gonna get a paycheck. I knew my schedule, I knew my hours, but in this industry, you do not know what is coming next. So it's feast or famine. You're either eating well or you're not eating at all. So find someone that can continually feed you. It may not be those big lump sums right at one time, but over time, it does add up quite a bit. Let's use some math here, right? So if I get a single client for $833 a month, that will equal $10,000 in the year. Now it's just one client, 830 some dollars, that is only a day or two of work, maybe a day, maybe half a day, depending on where you are 
in your rates. Now, early on, it may be much more than that, but here you are making just 800 bucks in just a couple days. Now multiply that. Let's say let's get, I don't know, 10 of those clients that are only paying $830 a month. That's not much for quality, valuable content that you can create. That's $100,000 right there. Now, if 10 clients at once is too much for a month, that's totally understandable. Now, bring that down to, let's say five. Let's say just five clients. If you're producing multiple pieces of content for them every month, you can make six figures off of 1,700 a month. Lastly, if you're a lot like me, you wanna talk about gear. It's just fun. Technology is fun. I'm a nerd, I guess. If you don't have any gear, here's how I would break it down. I'll break it down in priority of how I feel you should get these things. First off, a camera. You can't shoot anything without a camera. My very first camera was the Sony A7S, and it took me weeks to buy it because I couldn't decide between the Sony or the Panasonic GH4. And it was just back and forth after video, after video, after video of me watching all these comparisons until finally I realized that your camera is just a weapon. Your success is determined by how you use it. Don't overthink it. Just find the camera that's gonna do what you need it to and go from there. Next is the lens. And this is something that everyone normally starts out with buying a poor lens right off the top because they buy such a nice camera with thousands of dollars and then slap a cheapo lens right on front of it. And why would you do that? Like why? that's like buying a PlayStation 5 and throwing in some PlayStation 1 games. Now it's, it's different if it's Tony Hawk Pro Skater, but I digress. Buy quality lenses because your camera is gonna be looking through that glass anyway. You don't want any bad piece of glass in front of that camera. Lighting is so freaking important. I once heard it said, you're not shooting your subject, you're shooting the light on your subject. Even right now, we have a little bit of a dynamic look just because we have a shadow side here and a light side here. It really adds more emotion when you're able to have depth. So having a good softbox for interviews and other scenes or some type of an attachment on said light with a type of edge light that you can add in, even here I've just got a practical that's able to give me somewhat of an edge. This is gonna be important to have in your gear cage at the start. Something that'll add a ton of quality. It took me far too long to get a light like this for my business, should have bought it far sooner than I actually did. Audio would be the next thing that I buy, but the true reasoning is I don't know where it actually goes in this list of priorities because it totally depends on what you're shooting. An inexpensive shotgun microphone goes a long way when it comes to audio if you're shooting something like documentaries. Other things such as educational videos or even interviews you can get by with just a lav but almost always you're going to need a microphone on your camera unless you're shooting events and can just get by with scratch audio. I think audio is a great spot to make an investment. Lastly, I'm gonna put stabilization and I do think that tripods are a must. I think there's too many occasions where you need a tripod, but I do think that stabilization entirely is kind of overrated. More and more handheld stuff needs to be out there and it's tasteful, it looks great, it feels like you're actually there. Rather than just going with an always smooth, always catered look to stabilization, I do think that going handheld is very cool. If you watch commercials on TV during a football game or whatever you're watching, just watch the ads and see if there's a little bit of shakiness to some of these scenes and it gives you this real feel to it as if you were there. It gets me really excited talking about these things because I, I know I didn't do them myself, but I know that you can do them and take these things seriously, make them your own, make these things all your own and go do awesome things. Maybe make 100,000 in your first year. That'd be super rad. I didn't do that. Wish I did. That'd be cool.